debate for the position of mayor and municipality of Newmarket. I'm Bill Hogg, and it's my pleasure to moderate today's debate. Before I introduce our candidates, let me first explain today's format. The seating and initial speaking order were determined by random draw. Each candidate will have one minute to introduce themselves, and then at the end to wrap up, they'll have 30 seconds for a closing statement. Now, today's topics come from you, the viewer, either through email, tweets, or live video. I will introduce each topic and invite one candidate to provide their perspective, then other candidates will be able to respond and debate the issue. Before we get started, let's take a moment and look at the municipality. The town of Newmarket is a municipality in York Region. It covers a total area of 38 kilometers squared, midway between downtown Toronto and Barrie. Its boundaries are south of Miller Side Road to the north, Highway 404 to the east, north of St. John Side Road to the south, and Bathurst Street to the west. Newmarket is a multicultural community. English is the predominant language, but residents also speak Italian, French, Russian, and Spanish. From 1991 to 2006, the town of Newmarket's population grew by 63%. It now has a population of 84,000, and it is projected to grow to 98,000 by 2026. Newmarket features a diverse and growing economy, based largely in the business services, knowledge industries, administrative, manufacturing, and retail sectors. The average household income exceeds the provincial average. Newmarket has a small town charm with big city conveniences. The close proximity to Toronto makes it attractive to businesses and citizens. It is also the home of York Regional Headquarters and South Lake Regional Health Centre. Main Street is a unique experience with early 1800s styled historic architecture, street lights, and custom grown flower barrels. Its proximity to the Holland River Trail System and Ferry Lake allows for recreational, cultural, and arts activities. Newmarket also features places like the Upper Canada Mall, the Magna Centre, and the Ray 20 Recreation Complex. Transit services in Newmarket are provided by GO, York Region Transit, and Viva. YRT and Viva are building a rapid way along Davis Drive between Young Street and Highway 404, with fully separated bus-only lanes and Centre Street Station platforms between Young and Patterson Street. The project is expected to be completed in 2015. The town of Newmarket is represented by nine councillors, including one mayor, one regional councillor, and seven local councillors. Now, in response to viewer feedback, today's format allows candidates to engage with each other directly in debate rather than simply a traditional one-minute answer. This gives candidates the opportunity to demonstrate how their position differs from each other and encourages more informative discussion and debate. However, when one person is talking, no one is heard, so my role is to maintain order so that the viewers can hear what is said. Now, I've also told candidates that we are interested in hearing about their position and specific action items, that they plan to bring their vision to life, not simply to restate the issues and tell stories about someone in their writing who has expressed the same concern. Clearly, we already understand the issue is important, that's why you sent in the question. So I will interrupt and bring the discussion back to their position and specific action items. So, today we have three candidates. On the left of the screen, we start with Chris Campbell, followed by Tony Van Bynen, and third, Dorian Baxter. To get things started, I will ask each candidate to take one minute to introduce themselves and share with viewers what leadership qualities you bring that qualify you for the role that you are seeking. Starting with you, Chris. Thank you. Hello, my name is Chris Campbell. I'm proud to be your candidate for mayor of Newmarket. Thanks to the encouragement from local residents and businesses. I grew up in Newmarket. I completed a postgraduate degree in politics. I've worked as a teacher. I've worked in the high tech sector for many years and more recently worked as a financial advisor. Over the last eight years, our great town should have been thriving. But you're telling me that Davis Drive construction has been a disaster for Newmarket motorists and business owners. That it's not acceptable that Newmarket has the second highest tax rate in York region that recreation user fees are driving new market families to surrounding municipalities. And we need local jobs for local people and that your local issues are not being heard. This lack of leadership is not acceptable. It's time for change. We cannot afford more of the same. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. 
and starting us off with the first one being under the one minute. Well done. Now we move on to Tony. Thank you. I believe it's important for people who want to lead our community to be part of their community. My wife, Roxanne, and I have lived in Newmarket for more than 30 years. We've raised our two daughters in Newmarket, and now our grandchildren are growing up in our community. For more than 30 years, Roxanne and I have volunteered for dozens of community organizations. I've enjoyed a successful 30-year career with Royal Bank of Canada, leading teams of up to 350 people responsible for portfolios in excess of $750 million. It's been an honor and a privilege to be your mayor for eight years, and I'm proud of what we have been able to accomplish as a community. Newmarket deserves proven, compassionate leadership, proven business experience, and a clear vision and a plan for the future to make Newmarket even better. When you make your choice for mayor, consider people for what they have contributed to their community and the experience that they represent, not just promises for what or what they will say they will do. Thank you very much, Tony. Your time is up, and now we'll move on to Dorian. My name is Dorian Baxter, and I have lived in Newmarket for approximately 20 years. I love this town. It has been very good to me. I'm a single dad. I've raised my two precious daughters since they were two and four, they're now 31 and 33 entirely by myself. And Newmarket has been a huge, huge advantage for my precious daughters growing up here. Both went to uh, Newmarket High School here. And uh, I feel that it's time for me to seriously consider giving back. I have been an educator for 33 years. I got my principal's papers in 1989. And my first acting principalship was at Walter Scott in Richmond Hill, a school of 900 students, a staff of 38. I had a very successful time there. I also have my BA degree from York University, my master's degree from the University of Toronto, was an associate professor with Drake University in Des Moines, Iowa, training teachers for the province of Ontario for 16 years. Okay, Dorian, I'm going to have to wrap you and up there. And I would there. be honored to get you both on the 27th of October. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, gentlemen, let's get started with the big picture. When reviewing campaign literature, candidates like to paint a picture of what the future may look like under their stewardship. However, to be honest with you, increasingly it sounds the same. More communication, more collaboration, we want to manage growth, we want fiscal responsibility, we want to improve services, they kind of just move into a blur. So what I'd like to ask you today is what are the key differences you see between yourself and your opponents, and what are the key, the real deliverables, as opposed to just simple talk? And because we started with Chris, we're going to start now with Tony. Well, in terms of building new market and the future for new market, it's been more than just talk in new market. What we've been doing is establishing an economic development advisory committee to determine what our strategic advantages are when we position ourselves in a global marketplace. Uh, we've uh, established partnerships with South Lake, and we're beginning a research project uh, that will create jobs for us. And we're also entering into the uh, long-term future. We're building a gigabit mile uh, and of high fiber internet that's going to be able to make new market competitive on a global scale. This is a debate, gentlemen. Don't look for me to... Well, I, would say, I would say a clear differentiator is, uh, Bill, that uh, over the last eight years, we have had very little job growth. We've had a lot of manufacturing lose the town. Uh, I come from the business sector where I work with organizations. I go out and find business, and I close that business. And uh, I think unlike uh, the current mayor, I will be the, the face of economic delivery and development going forward. Uh, the mayor just uh, referred to uh, economic uh, advisory committee. Uh, they've been meeting for a long time, and uh, under his mayorship, we've had lots of reports, lots of uh, fancy uh, bulletins, but we haven't seen much action on jobs. I'm going to come in. I'm going to review the town strategically in 90 days, and we're going to go out and get some business in the high-tech sector. We're going to make some tax-free zones along the 404 corridor, and we're actually going to get people into work, local jobs for local people. Thank you. Actually, I just want to clarify that we have not lost jobs. If we take a look at it, new markets jobs are at the same level they were before the recession. 
And in fact, the health and services jobs have increased by 54% and represent 18% of the jobs in our community. Well, Business debate, services I, I have increased by 45%. But I do want say, the facts to be straight. Yes, I think we can't true. just say, and, and yeah. just because you say it doesn't mean it's true. Yeah, but just, the facts are yeah. the facts. Just to, uh, it is a debate, Tony, and, and I have to tell you, the difficulty I have here is that uh, I consider you to be a very good personal friend, and I like you a great deal. I've met Chris, I like him a great deal. I think, actually, we're lucky because we have a situation where I think it can be what I would call a win-win-win situation. Whoever gets in, I'm sure, is going to put Newmarket at the, the top of their so priority. Let's hear some... let, let, let me just say this. That one thing that I feel that I could bring uh, to the table that may be of, of assistance, I, I really don't like criticizing. I like to say what I'm going to do. What I would like to do is bring my skills as a conflict resolution expert to have a more smooth running council that can address these issues without involving the integrity commissioner. Uh, I, I would honestly like to see that um, you know we have a situation whereby we're prepared to let the ombudsman uh, come in. Tony, for example, um, you know you voted against having the ombudsman come in to, to deal with these things. I'm wondering why. Well, first of all, we have our own adjudicator. Uh, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario uh, do have that available. But we and, pay them. Uh, I mean, the, the ombudsman would not be yeah. paid. And no, it, just a minute. It, we yeah. do pay the ombudsman. No. How many hundreds of people no, does no, he have on staff? I understand, but I, I'm so, talking, I'm so what we do, no, but you want me to clarify. But, but, so but what we, we do are doing, doing yes. we are paying for an as-needed basis yes. for the, the adjudicators or for the integrity commission. But is there so, no danger, though, Tony, that they might feel, because the town is paying them and you're the mayor, that they might feel a responsibility to decide with you on issues? Is that Not at all. I think these are very professional people. Okay. They have very strong credentials, and they wouldn't compromise their independence to accommodate what they feel might be a political I, I, I think, I think the I think the issue here, and... and uh, I guess we straight straight a bit off topic. It's the fact of the matter, over the last eight years, we've had a lot of problems at council around accountability, about openness, about transparency. We've seen uh, we've seen a council fighting amongst each other, not collaborating, not cooperating. Okay, so uh, I, I so with gentlemen, the exception of one councillor, I, I am going to ask for you to tell me what you're going to do as opposed to moderating. Gentlemen, I can't hear you, sir. Could you so, speak? I would like to hear what you're going to do about it. We already we all read the paper. We all know the problems. I want to hear solutions, or I'm going to move on. It's, to. it's not about what we're going to do about it. It's about what we are doing about it. No, that's not What right. we are doing is we're establishing a gig a mile. What we are doing is establishing an innovation center. How much is it going to cost? Those money? things are going to create jobs for us. How much is it going to cost? How much, how much, how much, how much is it going to cost? How much is what going to cost? The, gig, the innovation the, center? The gigabit mile. The gigabit mile. Well, finish. You keep referring to Chattanooga. Chattanooga is a three hundred and thirty million never dollar. Referred, well, sir, never referred to Chattanooga. Yeah, you're, 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 I have chair, never. Your chair of the committee has. It's a three hundred and thirty million dollar project. Yeah, yeah, which is subsidized by the federal government. And our local business energy. case. Okay. Okay. Now, let me finish. Okay. How much is it? Our cost? business case could be anywhere from zero to a million to one point two million dollars, and that will depend on how the on how the industry responds to making this gigabit mile Tony, available. That's what the market has the strength. If I could just point uh, this out to Chris and to Tony that. The new market hydro apparently, Chris and Tony, are saying that they cannot support fiber optics along the current hydro wires. This would necessitate digging up but Main Street and Davis again. And okay. I don't think. How can well, you yeah, okay, I'll, I mean, that's, you can't avoid that. And that's why we're having an RFP. We're having an RFP to look at the options. It could be mesh network, it could be fiber optics. So, what we're doing now is we're asking for the internet service providers to tell us how we can make this work on the least expensive way and as to whether or not you're going to invest. Okay, okay. No, if, no, and no, when, if I'd like to get some this. clarity here. Just, I'll come back to you. So I'd like to get very one statement for or against the gateway. And if so, why or why not? I support the Gigamile uh, because I believe it'll bring in at least 200 jobs and at least 15 to 20 new businesses. Okay. Dorian, your I, thoughts? I, I cannot support it right now because I think that number one, it was brought in, and, and Tony, who is on the hospital board, wants to help South Lake, and I appreciate that. But South Lake are not interested in this. They made that clear. Bell and Rogers have clearly said there's no economic viability. But you're against. That's yes, what I'm just going to explain why, and I'm telling you why. And the third thing is the Chattanooga one that Chris referred 
$330 million, and they're still trying to pay for it. Uh, the, the, I don't want to see uh, the, the, the main street. Okay, I'm going to have to move on, but sure. I do want it, Chris. But, but you've got my vote. I, I, guess. I, I, I guess, don't support yeah. it in the, the current form. There's no business case for it whatsoever to, to bring the amount of jobs that uh, that this town needs. Okay. We need local jobs for local people. There's right. more than 40 pages that build All right, the business let's case. Let's move on. Uh, Chris, do you want to talk about more than one question in this? And um, I think the next question kind of falls out of this one to a certain degree is, um, if you are fortunate enough to be elected as the next mayor, one of the words that we hear a lot about councils these days is the word dysfunction, the inability to get together, the inability to find common ground. Certainly Newmarket has had their experience and share of this the last term. Um, you, at the end of the day, only get one vote. So my question is, how will you address the issue of bringing together council behind a single vision and get them moving forward on that? And uh, I believe that this question will start with Dorian. But I'm just going to get him to start. You guys can sure. jump in. As I alluded to earlier, I think that the main thing here is that we seek not so much to want to be understood as to understand each other. We have to have respect. And I believe that with my conflict resolution background, I'm a clergyman, I've also been an educator for many, many years, over three decades, and I've worked with staff and principals, and as far as I'm concerned, I can honestly consider myself an expert in collegiality, getting things done as a group and recognizing the importance of putting the needs of the citizens of Newmarket above any individual agenda. And I believe this council really can do that. I believe that when we have this new council, we can see a well-oiled, smooth-running machine if I have the honor and the privilege of leading this council in the next year. This council has accomplished a lot over the last four years. Well, and with the, exception, with the exception of one individual, there has generally been a majority of council that's voting in the majority that's speaking against the I'm eight speaking, people sir, that voting. Sir, I'm speaking. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Well, that's a debate. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. All right. You want but, us to debate. But I'd like to finish my question. Yeah, so so the, the, the situation is, is that we've built tremendous consensus. Newmarket has been recognized as one of the okay, best so the municipalities. the question is how, not what's been done. It's through building consensus. It's through building a strategic priority through consensus at the very beginning. But Tony, since you mentioned the, the, the one councillor, and of course it's Maddie Demucha you're right. referring to. And you know, Maddie, I was in, in, in the council chambers a month ago, and I was amazed at how she stood up against whoever else was against her and pointed out that this whole broadband thing had not even been legitimately brought to the citizens That's, of Newmarket. That, is, yeah, not, that, that is not correct. And it's not what you stand against. It's what you stand okay. for that takes the community let's forward. Take, let's take a look at this. The, the Ontario Odds Ombudsman has written uh, recently, and he said there's, there's a huge degree of secrecy uh, in councils throughout Ontario. And uh, this has been a disastrous, disastrous term with regards to, to, to openness and transparency. Let me finish, okay? So we have a code of conduct that hasn't been reviewed in eight years. Uh, as mayor, I would come in, I would get all, all the councillors around, so point of order, we would review, point, we would we have review just the code reviewed of conduct. the code of conduct. It has not been not we'll re reviewed for eight years. We review the code of conduct. Your, please get your we'll, facts we'll, straight. We will, we will, please get your facts straight. It's not working, Tony. It's not working. It has been reviewed. Gentlemen have to know. Okay, okay, well, we have to have, we have, we have to have, we have to think So you want to re-review the code of conduct. Absolutely. It hasn't worked for eight years. And we have more closed closed door meetings than any other municipality, cer certainly in New York region, and it's led to a lot of things that people aren't very happy about. But I, I don't think Maddie DiMuccio should be. Okay, gentlemen, we're not here to talk about Maddie, so let's move along. I'm going to move to our next question, which is on small business. So if you would refer to the video monitor, you'll be able to hear this uh, street question from one of our citizens. <laughs> Hello, my name is Rob Shigaris, and I'm the chair of the New Market Chamber of Commerce, and I have a question for the candidates. If you were elected to office, what would you do to help support the small businesses in the town? Please outline the specifics of your plan. Thank you. So we're looking for specifics, and Chris, we're going to open with you, and then anybody can jump in. Well, I certainly would be looking to actually support uh, all areas of economic uh, uh, development throughout the town. Uh, at the moment, the downtown, uh, the BIA, they get uh, they get some funding from this council. We need to be equitable in the way that we treat small businesses, particularly those who've been uh, hurt very, very much uh, through Davis Drive over the last last summer. Uh, we have a lot of businesses there that just haven't been supported at all by the town. And unfortunately, these businesses, uh, for 30, 40 years, I know some of these businesses, have felt very, very let down. We need to be working with them. We need to be actually investing in, 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 in some innovation with, with these small businesses, just not in the public sector. Uh, what we have to do is make the conditions right 
for small business to get on and do work. And that, and that requires a giga mile. That requires an innovation uh, center. If you and that's it, exactly that's what, what we're building. Come. That's exactly what how we're many building. Jo- how many jobs? There are 20 projects that are currently in the innovation center that's working on research to make our hospital far more technologically efficient. Research now, is a lot that, of venture capital that, money. It has that, to go through regulations. I'm They're not sorry, small, medium time I'm sorry, but these, that, this Tom. is technology yeah, I that will help our hospital. working for 20 years. Yeah, I'm sure you did. This technology will make our hospital more efficient, he was, and our was, hospital will benefit see, by doing that. You see, we've got these small businesses, and many of them have been driven out, Tony and Chris, by the, the, the tragedy that's going on on Davis Drive. I would certainly want to engage them right away, see if we can bring them back. And as you pointed out, Chris, and I'd like to ask you this, because Bill said how, how would you increase the current uh, amount of funding for small businesses? Well, we have to look at our tax base. Uh, we have businesses that are leaving. We have people that are leaving. Uh, we don't have any affordable housing. We have seniors that uh, want to downsize. We don't have a housing mix, so the tax base is leaving. And we have, we have, quite frankly, we have a lot of businesses here that have to face high development charges. We look at a place like Scarborough that has development charge is much, small, much smaller than Newmarket. Let's take a look, Tony, what's happening over the 4 4 quarter. It is lying empty. It's been lying empty for so, a long time. So you would, right? Yeah, so, so no, I just, I want to ask you, so you'd yeah, reduce, re- you'd reduce development charges? In some circumstances, yeah. yes. Oh, okay. let's, look, yeah. let's look at the yeah. year and year charges. Some okay, gentlemen, we've second. only got five minutes till we wrap this up, and I do want to get one more question in. Pay for infrastructure. That's Correct. So if the developers do not pay for that, then you and I will pay for that on our tax base. Is that what you'd like? No. No, no, no. Oh. Okay, well, then be clear. Okay, well, let's then be clear. I'm I'm going to wrap this up, and I want to talk about some traffic gridlock a little bit. It's going to be your last question. We've got less than five minutes because we've taken a little extra time on some of them. So here's the issue. The intensity of traffic that has occurred in the main arteries within Newmarket, including Green Lane, Davis Drive, and Young, are only going to increase, of course, as population grows. And the answer we hear all too often is there needs to be an increase of accessible public transport. And I guess I'm calling pish posh on that because the bottom line is is that Newmarket and York Region was built around the car. So here's the question. How do we use traffic congestion when people will not use public transportation? And I guess the second part of that is how do you encourage residents to actually use public transportation? Well, let's start off with Davis Drive. Davis Drive should be completed in 2015. And Bathurst Street from Green Lane, or, yeah, Bathurst Street from Green Lane to Young Street uh, is in the capital project starting in 2015, and uh, it will go forward to 2016. So that'll ease some traffic congestion. Young Street from Davis Drive to Green Lane uh, is scheduled to be uh, started on Q3 of 2017. But you need to remember. Davis Drive has not seen any improvements for more than 30 years. So when we're looking at Davis Drive today, we need to look at Davis Drive 30 years from now, 50 years from now. And so when, and so when we build a new market, and when we put 32,000 jobs and 32,000 jobs and 32 and 33,000 people in new market, it's a different new market. It's a, it's a new new market. The intentions are good, and we know that sometimes the road to hell is paved with good intentions. And what I want to tell you here is... This is the road to the future, not the road to hell. Take a longer build out than the Burlington Skyway and the Gardner. Gardner. I listen to you. Now, what I want to say is this. Just analysis. Tony, how can you you possibly... Tony, I'm I'm addressing Tony and Chris on this, because what I want to say is, how can you possibly guarantee the work that you're talking about on Bathurst when we've had this really tough situation? I mean, when did you expect this to be finished the first time you brought the project forward on Davis Drive? I think that we would we would have anticipated that we'd be done by now. Yes, and, but and there's but there are people but, saying that they're not going to okay. be alive when it's done. Well, that's, they're, they're, that's they're, not true. But well, what, well, what has happened is is that as we've built Davis Drive, we've entered, we've engaged in having to buy some buildings. There were soil problems. The we had the worst possible winter we ever had, so we can't control those things. Lots of more excuses for failure. Well, I yeah, guess it's, it's not a failure. Bill Rachel will be a success. One of the concerns of my success, you know, <laughs> really, I, I think working with council, I would be able to take the situation, mitigate it, and complete it 
as yes, the, the town of Newmarket needs leadership now to go forward and look at what's happened here. One the fact of the matter is, Viva Next has said, as of today on their website, that, that Davis Drive is only 54, 54% completed after, you're, after four you're years. At, so you're, looking at, you're looking at reports so, so that are 30 to 90 days old. Oh, oh so you're that's not what you're doing with the parking You are not a table for you. You are less than 20% of the working group meetings. I just want to write point that that is not accurate. I have the minutes. You need to. I have the minutes. I read the minutes. You are not a table for you. You make this. false statements. Todd, Dorian, just a minute. Yeah, I, I need to correct that. No, no, I need to correct this information. I've got the facts. Working, working meetings are for people who work. Those are for people no, who are on behalf of the people town. I'm the leader of the town. That's I'm right. on the board of directors. Do the board of directors go to staff meetings? Do they go to the cafeteria? For the most important no. project that's ever hit all the time. You weren't there for people with new market. And that's why we're suffering. These discussions were staff discussions where we had expertise. We had engineers, we had, you were we had architects. You, know, you, know, plan, you weren't there for the I, you I will you facilitate and complete the project, and I'm not did. here to fight, fight, fight. Tony, I'm here to find solutions. Tony, I'm why? here to win out ways. You've had eight years, Tony, and why did you allow Mulock to be, to, to, to be constructed at the same time as the major? I mean, why, why was that allowed? I know, it's a, I know it's a regional thing. You're, you're looking at Mulock Drive? Right? Yeah, but what? what but Mulock that? Drive was finished at night. I, hadn't, I didn't receive one single complaint. It was well, I have, I'll tell you, I've got a lot of people very that's because you may be inviting them the two main arteries, arteries at the same time. I mean, and now we're talking about Green Lane coming up. I mean, yes. these are the three main arteries. <laughs> and I think what I would like to bring is a common sense approach, an approach that looks at where we are without criticizing too much. What's done is done. Okay, I'm going to have to wrap it up there, gentlemen. And uh, can you believe it that we've almost gone through a half hour already? So first of all, I would like to thank you for taking the time to share your thoughts with the audience today. But most importantly, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to put your name forward for election. I've been there, and I know it's a very difficult task, and I do applaud all three of you for that. I'd like to now invite each of you to take your 30-second closing statements. And I think we have sort of gone around, and uh, I'm going to start with Dorian, if you don't mind. I would like to say that on October the 27th, if you do give me the honor of being the next mayor of Newmarket, I can assure you that I will bring true leadership. I will bring a leadership that will be cohesive. I will work to be collegial. And I believe I can help to make Newmarket the jewel in the provincial belt of Ontario. And if you do vote for me, I'll say thank you. Thank you very, very much. much. Thank you very much. We'll move on. Uh, Chris. Thank you very much. The voters of Newmarket, we need inspired leadership, we need better fiscal responsibility, openness and accountability in municipal government, and a prosperous business community. Vote Chris Campbell for mayor on October 27th. Together, we will bring back trust and confidence to Town Hall, and give residents a voice in local government, and give businesses an opportunity to thrive. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. And Tony, your thoughts? Thank you. Over the past eight years, we've made significant progress in renewing Newmarket, and our future is more exciting than ever. For more than four years, we've been recognized as one of the best places in Canada to live by an independent survey. Newmarket deserves proven, compassionate leadership, proven business experience, and a clear vision and a plan for the future. When you make your choice for the mayor, consider people for what they've contributed to the community and for the experience that is needed not just promises for or what they all say right. they will do. Thank you very much, Tony. On behalf of Rogers Television, I'd like to thank all of the candidates for their participation and to you, of course, for tuning in. Be sure to tune in on election night, which is Monday, October 27th, where we start at 8.30. And don't forget to visit our website at www.rogerstv.com. I'm Bill Hogg, and from all of us here at Rogers Television, thanks for watching.